All right, thanks for staying with us now on the 21st of July, 2019. Ogun State Ministerial nominee Dr. Boson Tijani posted a tweet that was dug up <laughs> during the ministerial screening on Saturday. Senator Buhari, while questioning the nominee, read the exact tweet that had gone viral saying, Nigeria is a bloody expensive tag to have against your name. Leave patriotism for a minute. That, that tag is a bloody waste of energy. A <laughs> second foreign passport isn't sufficient to clean this, um, that scene. Tijani, in response, told the lawmaker that he made that tweet out of frustration over what he, has, he had experienced rather while trying to get a, China, a Chinese visa. Um, he added that the second part uh, read explicitly mentioned that for us to lift this country, we must uh, find a way to correct our image to project a positive image because I don't want my two daughters to grow up to experience the same thing. So accepting the nominee's apology, Senate President Gotswila Pakbio <laughs> said, we are all fathers and we cannot throw the baby away with the bathwater. On behalf of the Senate, I want to accept your apology. Pakbio said, what are your thoughts, right? Uh, that was what he said. So what are your thoughts on Dr. Boson Tijani's ministerial screening process? Uh, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 So Joel, I'm just going to give you and Uti one minute each, please, because I want to bring in our guest. Let me hear your thoughts about the screening. What did you think when you watched it? Like, literally? Hmm. I was like, seriously? <laughs> really? Honestly, I... Um, I think I'm not, I'm not very, I have no issues with the fact that, you know, the Senate, this, they've decided to forgive his statement, you know, but I think um, it was how they said it. It was the words they used, like, okay, you our child, you know. It, it, I don't know, it just didn't sound right, mm. you know. If you're going to, you know, let go of something like that for, for, a sitting senator to have brought it up. It meant that it was a serious issue. And you must assume that that is also the thought of the people you're representing at the Senate. You, you understand? We, we sent you there to, to help us do the review process, you know, for the, minister, for the people who are supposed to take on the affairs of the nation. So if you're not looking at it, I, I just felt they just brushed it over like, okay, you know what? Mm. Whatever you say just suffices. Mm. I, I, I wasn't really... Okay. It, didn't, it rubbed off wrong. Uti and uh, I think you were on that show when you guys mm. discussed the relevance of this ministry. Yeah, the screening. screening if it yeah. was in necessity yeah. or yeah. yeah. So yeah. what are your thoughts? I don't know if you saw how far, how much you saw from the, the, the yeah. 40, 40 something minutes because I watched the complete video. Mm. But let me hear your thoughts quickly, okay. Uti. Um, Uti. Well, um, can you hear me? Yeah, go, go ahead. We can hear you. So this is <laughs> the sins. The internet never forgets. Mm. And the sins of the internet, particularly social media, will come back to bite you. Mm. Um, the process for me, really, was... I think they were lenient with him. Um, they tried to take a stance. There isn't a law per se against what he did so there isn't really a commensurate uh consequence for the action i like the fact that it was brought up because i think more people need to see that um i often say that if you're going to criticize that please choose your words wisely so him trying to defend himself to say he spoke in anger he spoke in frustration remember that what you have written Right. Once it's out there, it's out there and it's attributed to you for time and ages to come. So four years down the line, I mean, we've seen several other situations where people have been affected by this same what I post on social media. The approach taken by the Senate, I like the fact that they didn't make a big deal out of it. Um, again, I come back to a comment that we made on the day. It depends on the portfolio that is being attributed to the person. If this person, for instance, tomorrow becomes the Minister of Communication, then this is a bigger problem for me, right? But if it's a different portfolio, perhaps not so much. Um, so I like the fact that it came up. I wish that um, 
the, the focus on it maybe had been a bit more serious so that people, because if you go anywhere on social media, you see Nigerians constantly lamenting um, about Nigerians, destroying and affecting the image of Nigeria. And, you know, one thing we must, we must all understand is we are all part of the image of Nigeria. Mm. What you say as a Nigerian, whether you are, it is you or you think that it's only the leaders that matter, you are still painting a picture to outsiders, to other people, to the world, that this is what Nigeria is. And when you think about the situation that he talked about, when you think about the frustration, because it was an experience at an embassy. Embassies, the profiling of nations, of people, is not down to just the leaders as um, alone. It's down to the actions of the people when they go to those countries. We were just banned from Seychelles, were we not? Mm -hmm. It was the actions of everyday Nigerians like you and I. Same in other places across the world. These profiles are created not by our leaders alone, but by every single Nigerian that steps out of these shows and does mm -hmm. the wrong thing. Yeah. So when we, when we talk about these things, we must understand and acknowledge that they are far-reaching consequences, mm -hmm. right? Um, and we must be careful what we post. And we must remember, whether you don't agree or not, just remember that the world is watching. Okay. So be patriotic. If you're going to be frustrated, then position your frustration in the right way, um, where we can all still be proudly Nigerian. Um, but we talk about our challenges. And more importantly, we talk about solutions. A lot of complaining out there, not enough solutions. Okay, so let me bring in our guest. Victor Okai is the former presidential candidate and the current president of the Directors Guild of Nigeria, a seasoned producer, script writer, cinematographer, director, and film consultant. He is um, the founder and director of the In Shot Film Festival, the biggest short film festival in sub Saharan Africa, and a member of the Nigerian Oscar Selection Committee. Um, and he's joined us via Zoom. Um, tonight to put um, his two cents inside this conversation because he is a lover of the youth and a friend of the youth and I'm sure that he has a lot of things to say. Thank you so much Dr. Victor Okai for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. Alright, so this conversation is quite interesting because I watched a few things. Um, outside of this tweet that I read out, there was one part where he called the Senate people morons that we have to find a way to get them out of the house. Uh, and, and I didn't particularly enjoy the fact that at the end of the conversation, the Senate, um, the, pe the members of the Senate, uh, Senate House, they were focused more on trying so hard to launder the image of the president to say that, oh, he's a forgiving father, he's a loving father. In case you did not know, this guy was an NSAS protester and they picked him out and yet they still nominated him because he looked beyond the NSAS to see his competencies and all of those things. So uh, for me, I think a lot of times when opportunities like this come, uh, there's, there are deeper issues that I thought, you know, they, they should have found a way to drive home their points. Because like Uti rightly said, I mean, I think you also mentioned that the image is, is for all of us. It's not really for a particular person. Mm -hmm. So everybody has a stake. Everybody has a part to play. But let me hear your thoughts, um, Dr. Victor Kai. Did you watch this particular screening? Because I took my time to go and watch it. I watched it like three or four times. Um, let me hear your thoughts on this. And this is speaking to two, two sets of people. The young generation, that's us, and speaking to the leaders, right? I mean, what would you say you would say to both parties watching this particular screening? Like Ella, Ella rightly pointed out, uh, <laughs> I'd never forget. Um, <clears throat> that's on the one hand. Secondly, uh, it's important that when you criticize, you address issues and not personality. Hmm. Uh, it always helps because it might come back to haunt you or bite you too much. But thirdly, I think, and very importantly, people should be able to, uh, you know, start by what they say and, um, you know, be man enough to test what they have said in a manner of speaking. Um, for me, I think uh, Dr. Titani just lost his voice. Um, and by it as well. And I see him going into that, into government now as someone coward, beaten, and uh, who may not be able to. I don't know if he'll be, I don't know how, yes, he's going to come with his innovation, but 
I've seen a weakness that even the civil servants might take advantage of. I remember they are the ones that tried to push it. They are pushing up when you go into a ministry, you can only do as much as the civil servants allow you to. Yes, he's read leadership, I mean, he studied leadership and all that. And I hope and I wish him well. I hope that when he gets to whatever ministry he's sent to, that um, he's able to balance um, his ideas with uh, the ideas of the people there. And with what has happened and the way he allowed the Senate to um, intimidate him, I also fear that for those who will have oversight functions in the they will feel forever indebted mm. and uh, not be. I mean, before, I remember what comes to my mind now is uh, uh, what meant the late Taisho Larin, bless his soul, who was a fierce critic of the Babangida government. And uh, when he was giving people's bank to run, <laughs> he ran it at ground. And uh, at the end of the day, he had to apologize to the president because the loans that were taken, people did not pay back, and he expected the president to, to deal with it. I don't know, but just you can see that this is how it is in government, where you are there, it's criticized. Now, Dr. Titani occupies a very important space in, in among the youth and in the new generation because of what it does, the innovation, technology and what it represents. And I think it was a very important voice, whether direct or indirect. Um, NSAS itself stood for something that was, I mean, it wasn't necessarily anti-government, it was about the youth having it up to here. Uh, how do I mean? You know, he's in a sector where people work with um, laptops, with phones, and they're able to do business their offices are basically on, you know, on the phone or on the laptop, and they were being victimized unnecessarily by SARS, you know, the special anti-robbery squad of the Nigerian police force. And so that protest was justified because even in the end, government had to do reforms. It may have gone, it may have ended badly because of the way things went, but the the objective of that. Um, uh, that protest was with it, it had its merit, it wasn't without its merit. And so um, that fight was justified, and he, other young people were fighting to liberate themselves and stand their authority and say, Enough is enough. We represent a new generation, a generation that does not necessarily have to operate with bricks and mortar, but right in the virtual space with our phones and with our, with, uh, with, technology, you know, and he knows it better than most of us. Mm. And so the things he was talking about were right. But that day, although I tried to, you know, I, I heard him when he was trying to somewhat transfer himself. I think what we should have that afforded him a stage eh, to be able to put across the grievances of the youth. He may apologize on some points to say, okay, maybe my choice of language was wrong, but my my argument, uh, yes, what I would argue about. I, I choose, I would not apologize for, you know, some of the things that, you know, that I, I, I um, what's it called? The issues. Because yeah. I think he tried to put context to some of those texts and you could see that his anger was very justified. Mm -hmm. You know what? Let's quickly go on a very short break, right? When we come back from that break, I would continue the conversation because I have a follow-up um, um, question for you, boss. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're having a review on the screening, ministerial screening that um, took place on Saturday for Dr. Bosun Tijani. And we have with us Victor Hokai. Now, please remember you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 01 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow, I've come on the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so I just wanted to quickly point out something you said, and I'll come to you, um, Diola and Uti. 
you know you mentioned something around Thai Sholari and I, again I've heard this argument several times they've said that you know government when they really want to like you know just rubbish your brand you know they give you an appointment right and it seems like with this already it's almost like this person has been clamped you know crippled because this is supposed to be one of the strongest voices for the youth and I believe maybe that's where the agitation of the youth is coming from uh, we've seen people like um, like, okay, let me not mention him, but there were some people that were very vocal, you know, talking and everything. As soon as they got ministerial appointments or they got government appointments, they became, you know, like it was like a. So, so I'm, I'm just trying to ask is there something inside this government that, you know, like literally they are not welcoming to constructive criticism or people actually just, you know, telling them that, guy, this thing is wrong, you know, let's do it this way, let's do it that way. Is this something that. Because. I don't understand for the life of me why why we have a government that is almost like a rubber stamp. We can all not agree on the same thing. I literally, I would want you to tell me that oh, well, you are wrong on this matter and stand your ground. Give me points and tell me, okay, this is these are my X Y Z points why I believe that your your summation is not correct. But I don't think the government generally, and this is not even sticking to this particular government. Any government in Nigeria, I, I don't think they are actually open to criticism. Because if not, if you've chosen this person, except you just want to use it as a show-up, because they kept on, I, like I got enunciated with those, oh, the president is a loving father, is a forgiving father. So what was the point? You read the guy's resume, you saw that this guy had done exceptionally well, especially in the tech world, right? So what, what was the point of all of those things, bringing her back to it and now talking about baby and the bathwater? Do you people really want a change? You want us to change the situation or you just want people to just shut up? That's what you want. Okay, would that be for me or for... Yes, for you. I'm talking to... <laughs> okay, so, you know, there's this saying that um, uh, our people say that it is bad manners to talk while chopping. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if you know what I mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> when, when people get into government and start chopping, they cannot talk anymore. Mm. I think that Boson is, if you excuse my saying so, ordinarily, is even bigger than that appointment. By virtue of his accomplishments, his pedigree, and what he has been able to singularly accomplish by himself. He could be a consultant to all African nations. He is Coming into government should be like a favor to the government. And that's why I was embarrassed personally by the way he was governing as if they were doing him a favor. He would not have lost anything if he had worked out of that place with his head held high. Uh, like I said, I'm just afraid for him because uh, going forward, those who may have oversight functions over his ministry, when they begin to insert and remove things from his budget and begin to make demands, he may not have the moral justification to talk, mm. unfortunately. Mm. So I think that uh, Nigerians have lost another star. Maybe oh. it's too early to say. But from what I saw there, I feel, I feel sad. Mm. He is he's too much, even for that position, if you ask me. We should be begging him, you know, but it is what it is. Maybe he felt, yes, it's an honor to serve. If I were offered a position like that, I may not turn it down because I'm going there to serve Nigeria, not to serve anybody. Mm. And if, if, if they don't want me to do it, they can join well keep their job. You're going there is to serve the country and to serve the people. But if you're going there to serve an individual or a group of people and you're feeling... Um, you know, uh, grateful, so to say, or I think it's um, a privilege and honor for them to give you that, then you you will lose your voice. Mm. And uh, the civil servants, not even the politicians, once they detect that weakness, again, at the risk of sight, like a book of record, they would have lost it. Mm. I hope that he will be able to find his mojo and uh, be able to assert himself now that he's been confirmed and focus on the job and i hope that the president will provide the environment for him and the necessary backing for him to do the job and he won't be i do not see him lacking in ideas no i do not see him 
uh, uh, I think it will come with a lot of innovation. In any case, that's what he had his PhD. So I see a lot of that, but would the environment allow him? Has he um, asserted himself to a point where he can have his way and bring the necessary reforms? If you recall, someone like uh, what's her name now? Uh, Okonjo Iweala. She was very, very assertive when she was in government. She was a technocrat, but she would not, I mean, she was very assertive. And that's why she was respected. Uh, there were a few more like that. Uh, what's her name now? When she was a minister, um, Dora Kuyili, she was the only one when the president was sick and, they, they, you know, there was a need to get the, uh, what do you call it now? After the president died, I think I catch a corner. She, you know, it was at the Federal Executive Council meeting. It was for the ministers to be able to say, okay, let President Jonathan step in. The others were Lily Lever, they were afraid of the president's wife. They, none of them, the late president's wife, none of them could talk. Mm. But she was, excuse my choice of language, she was man enough mm. to be able to take the bull by the horns and move the necessary, if you like, motion or uh, 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 take the move to ensure that the right thing was done. That's why it's important that when you get into government, let people know who you are and remain consistent. If you do that, you'll be respected. Mm. I think that the president chose him because of his boldness, not because of his loyalty. He chose him because he felt he could bring something to the table. And I think the sooner he realizes that, the better. Mm. And I hope he can still maintain the respect he he had in the community where he was coming from. Okay. Yeah. Let me just uh, allow the other coming up. Okay, so for me, I think um, this presents um, an excellent um, opportunity, you know, for young people, you know, who want to serve, who want to be in politics and all that. And um, I like what um, the good doctor has said, that um, you need to be known for something. So as young people... We, as emerging leaders, let me let me put it like that. We need to um, we need to define who we are. We need to ask ourselves: Do we want to be liked or do we want to be respected? They're two different things. Now, I know that um, again, the the Nigerian political space is such that not very many people can boldly say that. Oh. I was called to serve or I got into this position by virtue of my competencies. Not many, not very many. A lot of them is, you know, you know how politics is in Nigeria and all that. And with that, 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 that makes one think that this is like you're being called. This is like a gift to you. So you don't look at the, the gift giver in the face. You have to be subservient more like, you know, to the gift giver. But um, if we get to a point where we define who we are, where we stand for something, where we understand that um, nation building is beyond um, being loyal to a personal person or, you know, trying to look good or trying to be politically correct, mm. I think that we will begin to see change. We will begin to see people who can honestly say that, you know what, these are my beliefs, you know, this is my belief and system my and this is my stand. Let me come to you, Uti, then I'll come back to our guest. Uti, quickly. Uti, are you there? I'm here, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Go ahead, quickly. Yeah, I said I like the position that Dr. Victor has taken. He's made some very salient points. Um, and my position and what I would like to ask his view on is, so there is the technocrat, so first of all, we call today and we say, oh, in leadership, in politics, we don't have enough young people, right? Now, here's a young person who has then been called up. And we can see already the way I interpret this as this is not an inexperienced person from the place of having done great things. He's, a, he's at the forefront of his industry, the tech space and all of that. But it, for me, what it clearly shows is a lack of experience, right, in the political space, in the type of person that you are, right? And the conversation between whether you're a technocrat, a bureaucrat, a politician, and all of these things come into play. 
Because Dr. Victor said something that is very, very key. You are going in as an appointed official into the public service where you are going to deal with career public servants. And your success or your failure largely also depends on how you work with these people. Now, when you have shown that this is how it, who you are in that kind of situation, how do you assert yourself? So I come back to what is the necessary experience? Mm. What is the weight of having political experience versus you being a technocrat okay. in being able to actually be effective in an elected position? Okay, Dr. Victor, that's the question for you. Yeah, okay, so... Um the thing is this, um, you need to be able to be, to be, to have a mix of both. Um, and what do I mean? Um, whereas you have your technical service, competence and all that, um, every person in a leadership position has to have a bit of um, tax diplomacy and um, Assertiveness or authority as well when you when you deal with um, um, colleagues, bosses, and subordinates. So all of that is very important. Uh, what I see in Bosu's case is a situation where I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you don't necessarily have to have worked with anybody. You can come out there and all that, but. Some public service appointment, like if you have served in your community, like your town's union, eh, where there's a lot of politicking as well. Eh, uh, if you have served in your Oswald's association, if you have served in your whether professional group and all that, in leadership position, you begin to pick up some of these um, uh, uh, traits. They are very, very important. Uh, but it doesn't mean, I mean, if you, if you as well as coming successfully, it also means that, and you read leadership as well. No, but, I but think <laughs> sorry, Dr. Victor, for cutting you short. I just wanted to say that, even though if he has served, the community where he's coming from is purely, have you, have you dealt with these tech guys, these Gen Z people? Somebody that I employ today, say I know they work again. They say, you know, they, like, literally, those guys, they don't have chill. The guys in the tech space, you yeah. understand? So, do you think he'll be able to cope? Because, I mean, when I'm hearing Uti speak, right? The the worlds, their worlds are apart. Right? The, this our structure and the tech guys, like, they are completely worlds apart. So, how would he manage all that no. politics, you know? He's respected in the tech space. Mm. Um, he's well-respected. He has... Um, been a benefactor to very many and has helped the career of many. So mm. quite a number feel indebted to him. My problem is not those in Gen Z or those in tech space. My problem is the civil servants mm. who go sometimes at variance with those of the political appointees. Mm. He has come in there with all the ideas and all that. This I just some of them are just looking for how to share money. Mm. Uh, if they hold you captive, and they you remember, let me give you an example. What's her name now? Uh, she came from the World Bank. World Professor. Adi Oshun. Adi Oshun. Adi Oshun. Adi Oshun. The Health Ministry. Mm. Health? Oh, Health Ministry. Uh, I can't remember that name. I have to look for that name. Uh, very prominent name. Uh, uh, I think they are the owners of this school in uh, our family. I can't remember the name now. We'll find the name out here. Go ahead with the story. A woman. He came this woman. Very innocent. You know, you know December time. You cannot return money back to government, so mm. to say. Eh? <laughs> so in her naivety, they say, ah, madam, you know, they just you know <laughs> decided to go into some sharing formula and all that. I don't think she even partook of the money or whatever, but you know, if you don't if you're not properly guided and advised. Eh? and you give certain approvals or you don't give the right approvals and all that, you run yourself into hot water. That was how this woman's career was. I mean, public this career was damaged. She was removed, you know, by civil servants. This one was 
innocent, but the very act itself was not innocent. They will push things to you, and sometimes, you know, they get you to compromise. If you are not very firm, you compromise. Let me share, let me share an experience with you. Several years ago. Quickly, sir. I, remember I was, there was a consulting project I was doing with, um, I don't mention the, uh, 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 the ministry or the participant and now I went, but when, where I went to, as soon as I got to that, I had two experiences, there were two places I could say where I got my baptism. Uh, the very first one, for me to just share this story, my love children I'm talking about, the very first one I went, this was during the period of not nine months. So it was a big deal then to have these, uh, these big phones and, you know. So I got into, I got into this state, appeared, made me, minister had already told them that I was coming. When I got there, the head of that particular parastika uh, said we had a meeting somewhere here and my no, 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 Can you just quickly? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, no, very quick. I'll make it very Okay, let me leave that one. Talk about the second place. This is one that we really, that was the biggest shocker. Let me not talk about that first experience and what they tried to do. But this second place, the second place I went to, the guy there that was in charge of uh, the PR department, when I was asking some questions, he said, do you want the real answer or the civil service answer? Hmm. We'll leave the it same there. reaction. <laughs> <laughs> we will leave it there. When he said that, I said, what, what are you talking hmm. about? He said, which one do you want? That was the first time I realized that. There's there a real be, answer. And there can be two answers. Absolutely. Eh? Depending on whether they like you or they don't like you, depending on whether you cooperate or not, they can present the right file or the wrong file. Mm. Oh my God. On that <laughs> note, <laughs> it's always a pleasure having you around, but sadly we've run out of time. But thank you so much, Dr. Victor Okai. Thank you, Uti. Thank you, Amadiola. This was a fantastic conversation. And we are hoping that um, Tijani... Um, Dr. Boston Tijani would truly, you know, make wave. I mean, let him make a, a lot of impact, whatever it is that he's been assigned to do, mm. to do based on his antecedents. Now, before we go, and sure you follow us across all social media handles at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us, drop your comment, and follow all our engagements on social media. We started our podcast on Spotify, so remember to follow, listen, like, share, and please share, share, share. That's all we're begging. I beg, just share. <laughs> All right, so if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. In anger, I tweeted what you read, which was paraphrased wrongly, and now I have a taste of what the youth do to you as well. If I wouldn't even touch this part, this, <laughs> the tweet you read is just the first part of what you said, or, or what you read rather. So this was from the ministerial nominee, Dr. Um, Boston Tijani. Now we'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. With our ladies' night out, we'll have a conversation. Um, great one to bring to your screen. Stay with us. <laughs>